good morning. Well, it's morning for us here anyway. Um, so today uh, we're going to be doing an, another COVID cup um, with masks on uh, for my model here, Darby. Now you've seen her before, and we're going to show a couple of photos at the beginning of this cup as it's progressed. We've been um, taking this from a regular mullet, and then we did our mullet, which was taken and shaped out in the sides. So she's done some great drawing. But now it's summer, spring and summer, time to get rid of all this. But we still obviously want an edgy cut. You know, Darby's not someone just to have an average look. She loves to have something that's artistic. And so we're gonna be sticking with that. What we're gonna be doing is leaving a lot of this um, texture through the top, but we're gonna be getting rid of a lot of this hair through the underneath. And so I'll start by um, giving her a good old electric shampoo and condition to get the hair ready and prepped and then we'll come back and we'll start the cut and I'll explain what we're doing. Okay so we've given this a good shampoo and condition and I just sectioned this top area out. Now obviously it's quite short but I'm just clipping it out the way and I'm bringing it down towards the occipital but we're sort of halfway between the crown and the occipital and this tells you where I'm going to reduce the most amount of hair. Now for use of, for use of those, for those of you that have seen the, the, the pictures of Darby before, it's been a transition. We had a regular mullet which we cut and we left a certain amount of length, took the sides out, then we did the monastic mullet where we rounded this out completely and shaved the underneath. What we're going to do now is we're going to take all this hair away. Now I'll cut most of it to reduce it, and then I'm going to scissor over comb. I saw um, a blow dry done on um, IGTV most recently, and it was a lovely blow dry done on extremely naturally curly uh, hair. It was blow dried out with a round brush. It was then put in large rollers, put under a dryer for an hour, brought back out, then smoothed again, and then they used a flat iron to get um, another curl into the end. And I thought it was fascinating and looked really beautiful and very great for the client. Several of the comments though afterwards were wonderful and saying it was nice to see someone taking so much time. And others were saying, you could have done that easily just by flat ironing in the hell out of the hair and sticking a roller in. It's the time you take that makes the difference and keeps you a different type of client. And so that's what makes what we do as hairdressers is worthwhile. So I could clipper this away completely, and I will use them for some of this, but what we're gonna do once we reduce this weight is scissor over comb. It's a practice that you need to keep up, and it will really help you to define and see where those shadows and lights are in the hair. Our clipper's great, and absolutely fantastic. There's not a tool that isn't used correctly, but the more care you put into the client, rather than just rushing the job, the better it'll be. So now that we've got this taken away, we're just gonna use a little P4. And I always use a combination of this and water as we cut through, um, because it'll just help us to slide through the hair easier. So the sides are already short, but here we go. And I'm just going to start to reduce these sides and break them right the way down. And also, as I'm doing this, I can see where the hair is going to lift up. This is going to be ultimately very short through the underneath. And through the back, we're moving still with our theme, but we're going to do a crown mullet where the drop that we just put through the back is going to be that little bit of length which will fall into this extremely short hair. So I'm just taking this section by section as always, as the sections are too big, just take the amount of hair that you can within your hands and your fingers and just take that hair away. This will just take a little while. So I'll leave you for a minute so you don't get bored. But all we're doing right now is reducing all this weight before we start to scissor over comb. So I'll carry on and I'll see you in a few minutes. 
So now we've got rid of all that bulk, but we got rid of it nicely just by working through. Now I can start to scissor over comb and just reduce all this hair down. I'm just lifting out slightly as I move up. A lot of this will still come off again, but I don't want to just take it off. I want to see how my shadows sit. This hair has a combination of blonde and red, naturally, and so it's going to throw off different shadow and light. And so I want to make sure that we work with that so that we get our best results. Moving to the finer side of my comb and continuing to just lift and work through. Moving into the back. And as I do so, looking at how the hair falls naturally so that when I lift this up, I push forward so that that hair will come away as I want it to and fall in place rather than just trying to go where, where it's growing from. Allow yourself to tell the hair where you want it to move to so that you can be in control. Okay, we'll continue this through. And obviously at the moment with masks, you can either get the client to hold it or you can just work through yourself. And I'll continue to reduce this weight, make sure that I don't have too much of a weight line anywhere. I'll work through into the back and look at the hairline. Even though this is coming off short, you can see some of it's growing back, some of it's falling forward. Take a little away. And now I can see my hairline, the movement, I can move this over, over, and then up, and continue through to reduce all of this. Let's turn my comb around a little, get that larger side. I don't want a large build up on the underneath. You'll see why when we drop the top down, but for now, I just want to see that this is blending and the shadows are sitting nicely because you can see a little bit more depth of color here, a lot lighter underneath. And so I want to keep that going. As I get through into this area, I'll change to this comb and that way I can get really right the way into that hair. And if you're not used to using a tapering comb, which they're wonderful, they bend with you. You can actually bend into the hair. Just make sure that you don't get over exuberant because they're so fine. You could end up cutting above or below it and you'll end up cutting a line across the hair. So when you're working with your taper, just make sure that you're doing exactly that. You're tapering this hair, you're blending it in and really softening that shape and that'll work really nicely here look where I got the cape I mean sorry where I've got the um, the mask I can bend this and it becomes my friend into these areas so I just continue this through softening that shape bringing that together and then we'll come back and see the underneath once it's finished So we're just finishing off this underneath area for Darby's hair. And you can see by scissor over combing, I can really get into those areas. We've got a really nice soft finish, but I can clean this up with a clipper if I want, or if someone wants a natural hairline so that this just grows out, we can do that because of the amount of softness that we've added into this look. So the hair naturally is moving forward and over into the back. And so I'm moving up so that we're cutting into the area and then over. And then you just turn your comb around and come up and take anything off, which is just that extra little bit through the top, just to lift that out and blend that shape here. And just keep looking as it's drying out 
and see anything else you want to take away as you move around. The wonderful thing is you can see the direction of all the hair and how it moves. And so it's a lovely way, it's quite therapeutic for the hairdresser as well, just to work through. And as I say, clippers definitely have their place but it's really nice where you can just taper through and just scissor over comb and just take away that hair. So I'm just going to use my clipper just to take away this underneath area. Again, if you want to put a bolder shape through here now that you've got it so close you can. Just want to decide how that's going to look. I'm just taking that away. Again, when you're using the clipper or your edger as this is, just use it in the direction of the hair that you want to take away and the shape that you're wanting to put in there. Once this is done, we can just dust everything out of the way. Pop back to my other color, see where I want to refine, and then we'll just drop the top down, and then we'll just start to define the top area of this like crown mullet. Going to use a little bit more like a little water because this hair's had time to dry out now. And now we can see how the two areas are going to sit together. and how we're going to get that softness falling across the underneath. So the nice thing is, as you remember from before, we had a very solid shape through here because of that monastic mullet. But now that we've dropped this down, because it was layered from before, we're getting this softness, which is one thing that uh, Darby really wants to see. The other thing about it here is it's exceedingly thick. Great problem to have. And so we want to leave some length so that we get some visual texture into this but we also want to reduce. So what we're going to be doing is cutting into the hair to break that up. Now, I like this length falling over into the sides, but the back is longer than we need. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the side as a guide, and I'm going to draw the hair back over into that area. So starting through the side, just around the ear, I'm going to lift that up, and just take that away. Now I'm using an angle out so that this collapses it down. I'm not trying to build weight here because before we had a weighted shape which sat very solid. Now I'm wanting a softer shape. So we continue around. I'm gonna lift this back to ear area. It's around a 45 degree, but again, like all degrees, they're just a guide to let you know the sort of angle you want. According to the shape of the head, the density of the hair, that's gonna vary, it could be 42. I'm not gonna hold you to it. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm, I'm elongating, lengthening the back, but not as long as, as it is here, by just pulling that around. Now if I pull it right the way to the ear, obviously it's gonna drop down to where it is now. So I'm only pulling over one or two sections, allowing it to drop. So that we keep that soft shape. And you can alter this as you need, as you work through. So I'm just gonna work past center slightly.
probably lift that centre slightly. And now I'm going to do the same on the opposite side, which will give us this nice shape falling back with this softness. And then we'll start working into the top. So I'll complete the other side and then I'll come back to you. So having finished both sides, you can see we have a lift in the crown. When you're pulling over, allow before you even start, and I know Darby's here, I know how much this lifts, and we also like the lift, but make sure, if you're wanting something that sits flat, you're gonna to have to leave more weight in here. But for me, I want this lift to happen. We're moving into the top now, and again, I'm working with someone whose care we're cutting on a regular basis. So yes, we're cutting a new cut into it, but don't get tied down with everything has to be different. This front's working well. We just need to cut into it. What's different this time is we normally, with Derby, we cut a very strong, rounded fringe, which moves into what was that very solid shape. Now what we're doing is we're keeping a little bit more length here, which is different for Derby. So what we need to make sure is that we lift some of that weight out of it so that she's comfortable with the whole feeling. Because that way, we've got a new look completely but it still feels the freedom of the shorter haircut she had before. So, moving from the crown, where we have that length, we've already cut that shape. I'm now going to move into here, and I'm cutting in quite significantly into the hair. So if you see this, you can see we're working to get rid of a lot of weight in that hair. The sides, you could do this in two sections if you need to, but because this has already been cut, we're only really working into this top area. And so again, quite aggressively and working forward, I'm just taking that hair away. Now, like any hair where you want it to soften, as I'm drawing this up, I'm pulling back slightly, because obviously as it falls forward again, it's going to allow the softness to fall into it. So, pull back. And quite aggressively cut in because as we soften this and drop it forward, the longer areas will come out and the shorter areas will allow us to have that texture that we want. Now, of course, the wonderful thing these days for all clients is as we cut, their hair falls into their mask so they get to keep it for later. <laughs> <laughs> so again watch your cup in your mirror if you're working with a mirror which in a silent situation you normally would be this is really fun because you're you're working off of the cup you've already done but you're making it completely different, but you're able to use the angles and techniques you used before and to blend them with your new cut. You can see there's jumps in the front of the cowlick, whatever you want to call it, in the front of Darby's hair, in the crown. These are wonderful. Quite often I found when I was in a younger hairdresser, people would avoid crowns or people with uh, bad hairlines considered that. They're wonderful because those swirls and wiggles and things are things you can work with. Those jumps are things that you can make your own. If this jumps, I'm not going to lift this hair and cut into it. I'm going to allow it to dry, see where it falls, and then I can see where the weight's sitting heavier, and I can just take that area away. Whereas next to it, where the hair sits down smoothly, I can lift this up and decide that I want to take some of that away because I know exactly where it's going to fall. So each way, you know why and how the hair is going to sit. Now I can blend what we've just done for the top with the side and take a little bit more of that away as I see fit. And really start to soften that shape. We work side, but I'll just continue. And again, quite, quite bold zigzags into there.
And also, don't be afraid to use your mirror to turn the client around completely, especially when you're scissor over combing. If I'm scissor over combing and I'm looking directly at it, I can step back and I can give myself another view. But what you also do is turn your client all the way around and look at the back through the mirror. Now you're twice as far away from this back area as you would be, which gives you twice as much chance to see any problems you may have or any steps, any shadows. And so always use the tools and the area around you, your mirrors, your combs, your scissors, everything to make sure that you're getting the best out of the look you're trying to create. Now into the very front. I'm going to make it dizzy in a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lift up, and again, I'm doing this freehand. If you see how the hair moves naturally, because that's going to do that, and this is a short cut, I want to make sure that I do the same thing into this front, but as I drop this duck down, I can allow softness to start falling through. And we're going to use some nice powder on this to bring this out and use this texture. It's funny, sometimes you think of powder to control or lift when hair is very fine. It's fabulous with thick hair because it allows it to get some grip and, and texture. So don't just think of it as something for fine haired people. Now you see this texture that we put into the top works into the natural lift into the crown. Excuse my side. I'm just taking that off the same as we did just into here. Just seeing how that works through. I'm going to continue to refine for a few minutes and then we'll recap on what we've been doing with Darby's hair. Okay, so we're nearing the end of Darby's cut. If you're wanting a little more texture into the front, remember we've, we've let this dry, we've allowed it to do its own thing. Now you can sculpt as a hairdresser, you can look again in your mirror and if you want, just take out areas that you see are a little bulky, a little heavier than you want them to be. We are keeping a softer fringe here, but again, she wants that feeling of lightweight in there. And into the hair cup itself, we've done our heavy texture. So, if you want to come through and keep your scissors at an angle in line with the hair, and you can just take one or two hairs away at a time. Do not turn them unless you deliberately want to take chunks out. When you're showing someone this technique in your salon, make sure a younger hairdresser or a hairdresser that hasn't done it before understands that you're just nipping at one or two hairs, just to really soften certain areas. Otherwise you'll plow through like you're in a field and there'll be nothing left and that is not the look that we want. Into the, into the side now, you can see a little bit of length dropping down. So I can lift this up, and again, lovely line we have, but we can now cut into that and just soften one, two, three hairs at a time. We're going along with the crown movement, seeing where the hair is sitting, where does it feel a little heavy? Let's just soften that off and allow that to fall free. Okay, our shape's looking good, so we're just going to dry this off. So first 
I'll just pop a little bit more water on the hair, just to refresh and allow it to start sitting in its own position. And then we'll dry it. But we're going to rough dry this. Obviously, we're wanting the shape to fall quite freely. Um, if your hair has too many lifts and you're teaching your client to get rid of those lifts, then obviously tell them to go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards with the dryer in the same movement, which will flatten these areas out. But if they're allowing their hair to fall naturally, which we are, then we're just going to allow this to sit freely. So I'm just going to get my tools together and then we'll do a quick blow dry. Okay, let's take a little C6 cloud burst. Nice and gentle, but with a little texture, which is what we want. Remember, we're going to allow this to form its own shape because we've taken so much away and we want the lift. But we, we've literally looked at this haircut in each area as we've gone through, allowed it to dry out so we can see where it's lifting, what it's doing. And so I want to make sure that we use that. A quick dry. And I'm circling with my dryer circling just so that I can get that movement happening. Only short, make sure you get right the way down to the root, and I think it's sitting really nicely. What we're going to do now is we're just going to drop this wonderful powder into the hair. Our C8 will just allow this texture to really come to life. And now, almost just massaging into the hair, pulling it forward. Allowing it to sit into place. And instead of having that heavy mullet, which was totally fun, it could have gone on for months. It's a, it's a real cool look. But now for the summer, spring, we've got this short mulleted back into a really close, clean, scissor over comb, under area, really bringing out the natural tones and colors in the hair, which is just fabulous. This is natural, unbelievable. And then this nice, soft, spiky fringe and tons of texture into the top. We've got a nice overall shape. Looks even better without a mask, but you'd have to take our word until we get photos for you and a great spring look for Darcy, uh, for Darcy, that's my friend, for Darby, <laughs> also my friend. And we hope you like it. Thanks a lot.